May I say how appropriate and wonderful it is to be speaking to elected representatives again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a trustee and lead researcher for Physicians and Scientists for Global Responsibility. Since I spoke to many of you last in council chambers, I have a master's, a sociology master's research. My research looked at the experiences of scientists attempting to get funding to research environmental chemicals as drivers of human health, in, with particularly in regards to uh, endocrine disruption. And uh, so the reason you don't get scientists presenting to you is because the funding pathways are not there. Um, so, first of all, we would like to sort of simply, the, the context is, is the Director General misleading officials? Does the Health Act 1956, Section 116 now, contradict other relevant legislation required to be considered by you as a territorial authority so as to protect health? And can you pause capital works without financial penalty? Next, please. So is it appropriate that New Zealand's gold standard for the safety of fluoride is established by a politically timed review from the Office of the Prime Minister Chief Science Advisor? So risk assessment is not a departure from the science, but it's being true to science. Uh, next, please. So if we see here, we see the Office of the Prime Minister's um, Chief Science Advisor, the OPMCSA, most of the peer reviewers were already um, focused on oral and dental health. When the uh, Office of... Uh, next one, please. So the review was politically timed one day after supplementary order paper 38 was released by the Prime Minister's office. As in 2014 with Peter Gluckman's, the 2021 paper had no methodology, peer review panel, and the peer review panel was exclusively with oral and dental health. No endocrinologists, toxicologists, or impartial epidemiologists were involved. Uh, the Cochrane study 2015 for fluorosis, they did not look at any other potential risk. So no risk assessment has ever been held. Next, please. Wow. <laughs> So is it appropriate that risk assessment to judge pre-existing exposures in infants and children and risk from fluoride dosed into water by developmental stage and body weight has not occurred in New Zealand? Next, please. So this is uh, Joseph on constitutional administrative law, obedience to convention. It is a convention that risk assessment will occur for hazardous, uh, hazardous substances. For medicines, it is a convention that they will go through peer-reviewed um, trials that are overseen for safety and efficacy. Next, please. So if we look at the select committee consultations, what we find is that the public have been written out of any capacity to critique the Ministry of Health's advice, uh, uh, um, declaration that fluoride should be in water. So in 2016-17 and 2021, both of them stated that we are, we are not listening to any of the public discussing risk because it's not within the subject matter that we're talking about here, the content of the bill. So there has been no capacity for the public to come back with these concerns. Next, please. So it, beyond the subject matter of the bill, uh, peer reviewers were oral and dental health experts, not impartial toxicologists. If we talk specifically about under eight-year-olds, because this is um, the, the group that are most at risk, they consume more by body weight and they retain more fluoride in their bones. And in fact, children will retain up to 80% of the fluoride intake in their bones, while adults will retain far less. Uh, next, please. So, as we see, the science showing IQ harm is not going away. This NTB group did another review, just a quick review, and found that the consistently updated literature search will show continued harm. Next, please. Does the Ministry of Health and the Director General Section 116 undermine the Local Government Act 2002? Next, please. <coughs> So what you see is you must identify and assess any other public health risk. So what's really interesting is that you have to improve, promote and protect public health. Now, you can make bylaws for the, specifically for this purpose. And I think if I'm not 
incorrect here that section 153 says the crown is bound by any bylaw if non-compliance with that bylaw by the crown would be likely to have an adverse effect on public safety you may make like bylaws for the um for the particular reason for um protecting public health next please does the ministry of health and the dg's section 116 undermine the water services act next please so what you have here is one line. It says other causes together with the consumption or use of fluoride water. So of, of drinking water, sorry. So you've heard Dr. Alana's um, comment on, uh, on uh, infant formula. So what we have is an understanding that children in New Zealand already have higher levels of fluoride in their um, urine than adults. And please note down there, the maximum acceptable value in the WHO is a 1984 study. If you go back through the drinking water guidelines, you will find that they have not reviewed the scientific literature. It's been locked in. Next, please. So we see here that you have uh, rules. And if we look at the bottom right, bottom right, we've received 9-11 notifications from local for um, notifications that exceed determined levels. Um, next, please. So your challenge, so, so navigating uncertainty is values-based. So you, the margin of error is do cumulative exposures exceed 1.5? Now, exceeding MAVs is common. Children have toothpaste. That's not been taken into account, the exposures from toothpaste. We also know from the CPHR report that young children have higher urinary levels of fluoride. Next, please. So the, you, you, you are required to value, protect and enhance the environment. Fluoride has never, or hydrofluorosilicic acid has never, ever been risk assessed by the EPA. They have never, ever looked at fluoride and HFA emissions to water from Wellington or Auckland or Dunedin. Um, there's no consents required. There's no fluoride assessed in the ESR's groundwater survey. Uh, and the margin of safety for children for, uh, for example, pesticides is normally tenfold. So we should not be seeing a dismissal of a margin of safety for small children, but that's because risk assessment hasn't hurt. So the gaps are ridiculous. Next, please. So you, the, the section 116 does not grant permission to put HFA in the municipal water, and that's what you're putting in. Now, the evidence bar for the Director General is that scientific evidence reducing prevalence and severity of tooth decay. If any one of you know children with terrible teeth and particularly from low socioeconomic backgrounds, they will have seven. They might have seven. They might have nine. So what we see is all that Director General has to prove is maybe they've reduced their uh, dental decay by two. Then what we also see, next please, is that there is absolutely no requirement for, no legal obligation for the Director General to conduct risk assessment to assess safety. The, the Section 116 is terribly, terribly drafted. Next, please. So the court judgments, the courts have not tweaked, the judges have not realised that not undergoing risk assessment is outside administrative convention and that safety is not drafted into the, leg the legislation. So decisions must be reached justly and fairly and seem to be so. Next, please. Because what would a fair-minded lay observer say? So we're wondering, are there manifold inconsistencies and absurdities here? Next, please. Sorry, can we uh, wrap up, please? Yep. So, yep. so there is a duty to warn. You have a duty to warn. This is from Joseph. This is the public law uh, Bible for New Zealand. Next, please. Risk assessment is not a departure from the science, but it's being true to science. Next, please. So this is the questions we have. The Director General has made it clear he will not press for Hastings Council to conform to the fluoridation order. They are under until future legal issues are re resolved. So we request that TCC set up a process to further review the issues and options. You should be able to be re recompensed for the money you've spent with the full knowledge that there is now an elected council that can actually make their own independent and impartial decisions. Thank you so much.
Okay, thank you, uh, thank you very much uh, for addressing the council. Um, I'll just open it up if, if any of the councillors have any um, questions.